Hello fellow Cricut crafters. This is my first ever tutorial video. So please forgive me, I am not tech savvy. So <laughs> this is the best I could do using my phone to record my computer screen. Um, I took an various image shots, screenshots of my phone and put some tutorials over on the side. <clears throat> I will also upload these photos so that you can kind of go at your own pace as what I'm about to show you. So this is the um, app that I've used. It's a PixArt photo editor. It's free in the Google Store Play Store app. And just I just open up that. So it'll you open up the app. It'll ask you to download an image or upload an image. This is the image that we're going to currently work with. Uh, we're going to use the fix tool, the FX effects tool at the bottom. You're going to end up clicking on that. <clears throat> It'll bring up this series of effects that you can choose. You're going to click the magic one and it'll bring up this little scroll over here. You'll scroll to the side and you'll find this sketchy effect. You'll then click on that and it'll create your image to look like this. You can click the sketchy effect again. It'll come up with this little series of tools right here. I, di I didn't get a screenshot of that, but it'll come up with a series of tools. You can adjust the settings like lighting and intensity and all of that jazz. You can adjust yours and <clears throat> get it as clear as possible. You'll end up with an image similar to that. Make sure you click this check mark up at the top to apply your settings. And then you're going to go back to the main screen. It'll take you back to the main screen once you adjust your, your apply your settings. It'll go back to the main screen. You can click the tools button and then the adjust. This will allow you to adjust the contrast and the brightness and the color saturation, all of that jazz to your photo. You'll want it as black and white as possible and with defined lines. So this is what I ended up with after adjusting, like I said, all of the brightness, contrast and saturation in this area here. Be sure to apply the settings just as you did with the other one by clicking the check mark that'll be up here. And then you'll click that arrow that you saw back in the other image. And it'll ask you to, that'll give you an option to save your image. You'll save your image to your phone. And we're about halfway done. So then we use the background eraser. This is the app that I use. It's also a free app in the app store. I open up the app. And it'll ask you to upload your image that you want to crop and erase the background for. And then once you upload your image and choose your image, it'll ask you to crop as much of the background as possible that you don't want. I did not get a screenshot of me actually erasing the background process, but this is my end result. <clears throat> and then once you're finished, it will give you an option down at the bottom to save as a JPEG file. And I use that just because it gives you a nice white bracket background instead of this checkered, like no background option. And so there's the end result with a nice clear white background. And then it'll give you the option to share your JPEG image. This is when I save it or I share it through, just send it to myself through my email account. <clears throat> and then I can upload it. I can go to my email on my computer and I can download it from my email onto my computer and then I can use the editing that you're about to see next to complete 
the photo. So we'll go next after I have downloaded the image from my computer on my email. I can then take it to the picksvg.com website. This is a free SVG conver converter site online. Um, up towards the top, you can't see, but up towards the top, it'll ask. It'll have a little bar, a green bar like this, to upload the photo. <clears throat> you can upload your photo. Photo. It'll have a details and a filters little drop down menu. I always use the strong detail. The filters, they'll have an invert, one numbers like one through three or one through four, and then they'll have a ready one through three and one or one through three or one through four. All of them are different. They come up with different images like you see here. Um, for this image in particular, I did the detail strong, which is I find better for portraits. So you'll do the details strong, and then you'll choose which one you want to work with. In this case, I, in this case, I did the invert number two. It came out the best and gave me the most detailed lines. Of course, there are a lot of lines that I did not want, but that was okay because I was able to download this image to my computer. Once I downloaded it to my computer, I then opened it up in Microsoft Paint. And I used that program to clean up all of the lines. As you can see here, this is the before image, the one we just downloaded from that picksvg.com website. And I took all the, the lines that I did not want and cleaned them up. This is my after image. So after you have the image you want and it's cleaned up and everything, your last step is to take it back to that pick svg.com website. We can go back and look at the website again. <clears throat> you'll do the same thing. You'll upload up here at the top of the page. You upload your image. You'll pick your details and your filter and you'll get your ending result. And it'll be similar to what you just created in Microsoft Paint. What you just edited in Microsoft Paint. It'll come out similar to this and that'll be your ending SVG file that you can then download to your computer and then download to design space. I hope that helps everyone and gives you an idea of how I do this process. There's a lot of steps to it as you can tell but it's the best process that I have found that I can do it. Um, like I said, I will download all these photos to my tutorial too, so you can reference to the photos that I just showed you on this tutorial. But I hope that has every helps everyone, and have a good night, guys.